Maybe we knew them, maybe they were a stranger. Maybe it was intentional or maybe it was an accident. But one way or another, most of us have had people in our lives that have caused us pain. And sometimes that pain is hard to let go, often leaving us feeling angry, hurt, bitter, confused or vulnerable. It can knock our confidence and severely damage our self-esteem. In short, it can have a powerful negative impact on our lives. And it's for that reason I've decided to share with you my story. A story that has negatively impacted my life for 27 years. I want to share with you how it changed my behaviour, my thoughts and what I believed was possible or not. I want to share with you how I realised the true extent of the damage that it has caused. And I want to share with you how I stopped it from affecting my life anymore. And I want you to hear my story. I hope it will encourage and inspire you to overcome difficulties that you've either already faced in your life or you have yet to face. And my story begins at the age of five. That's the age I was when my 15-year-old stepbrother began to sexually abuse me. The abuse lasted for three years. My stepbrother, who was my father's son, had just started living with us because he had fallen out of his mum's partner. Understandably, it wasn't long before my parents made use of their new in-house babysitter. I remember the dread whenever my parents left the house. I remember the confusion when anyone made a comment on how great he was with kids. I remember the heart-pounding fear when he offered to take me out anywhere. I remember being frightened, constantly frightened. Life moved on. He moved out and our whole family had less and less contact with him. I was too scared to tell my parents what had happened. It took the courage of another abused child to speak up first, before I could mutter to my mum the words, he did it to me as well. I was 14 or 15 years old. And then it never got mentioned again, not for decades. Not by anyone. I buried it. Everyone buried it. And it stayed buried for the next 25 years. Until I started to slowly realise what a large effect the abuse was having on my life. The realisation started when a business of mine failed in 2008. I spent the next two years doing very little. Feeling very depressed and lethargic. Had no passion for life, no hope. And it got so bad by 2010 that I realised that I just couldn't continue like this. You know, I needed to do something. I wanted to understand why I felt this way. I wanted to understand why my business failed. I wanted to understand who I was. But I know it sounds silly, but who was I? What were my beliefs? My morals? Where did they come from? So I went away and learned. I studied psychology, uh, personal development methods and neurology. I listened to hundreds of hours of audio, read countless blogs and magazine articles and reports. And in an attempt to really discover where my beliefs had come from, I also wrote my autobiography. And the discoveries I made when writing this book absolutely astonished me. I could trace all of my most destructive personality traits back to the time of the abuse. I could trace most of my limiting beliefs back to the time of the abuse dawned on me how much it had shaped my life. It affected nearly everything I did. I used to get angry when I felt I wasn't in control. And I realised that was because I wasn't in control and felt totally helpless during the abuse. My entire business life was fuelled from a mixture of anger and fear and frustration. I felt he was better than me, above me, in control of me, and I wanted to prove him wrong. And I needed to prove to myself I was good enough. And these emotions, they weren't all bad. You know, at least they provided me with the motivation, the the need and the determination to go out and start a business, to grow it to nearly two million a year. But it also gave me the self-doubt, the apprehension, the limiting beliefs. And you know, as my business grew, I always knew I'd never be able to grow it any larger than two million a year. I remember when we were turning over 200,000 a year, I could dream about us doing half a million. When we hit half a million a year, I could visualise us doing a million. When we hit a million, I could see us doing one and a half million. But when we hit one and a half million a year, I couldn't see us doing two. Never. Just couldn't picture it in my mind. And what happened? 
The company hit a peak of 1.9 million a year, then sunk like a stone and collapsed. And I never knew why. Why couldn't I see myself running the business turning over more than 2 million a year? But now I realise it was because, subconsciously, I was frightened of losing control. Because when a business starts getting to that size, you're going to have more staff, need more managers, more areas that you're going to have to delegate, more control, you're basically going to have to surrender to others. And I just couldn't do it. I had to be in control. It was my subconscious mind protecting me. Because my subconscious mind remembered how I felt when I was being abused. The helpless feeling of not having a say in what's happening to you. My subconscious remembers the fear, the hurt, and the pain. And now, even after 25 years, it still protects me and stops me from being in that position I'm not in control of, no matter what the cost. But, you know, that realisation didn't upset me. Of course, at least now I knew. Now, I finally knew why I acted like I did, why I thought like I did, and why I believed what I did. And what a relief that was. Because now I knew the cause of all my negative thoughts, feelings and behaviours. And now I could cure it. And I knew instantly and instinctively what I had to do. First, I had to take full responsibility for what happened. My entire life, I blamed him. It was his fault, nothing to do with me. I was the victim. And if you were a victim, you give yourself no power to do anything. And it was the feeling of powerless that made me so frustrated and angry in the first place. And you know, you can take responsibility for something that wasn't actually your fault. They are different. I know I wasn't to blame for what happened, but how I deal with it afterwards is my responsibility. It's my responsibility to use what happened to help me understand human nature, to help me understand myself, and to help me share my thoughts in the hope it may help others. It's my life, my choice, my responsibility. And today, I am no longer a victim. I no longer feel that part of my life was out of my control. I've grabbed control back. I feel empowered. But I knew I needed to take one more step to completely release myself from the past. I knew I had to forgive him. Totally, unconditionally forgive him. Now some people may struggle to accept that idea. But it's not healthy for me to go through life full of hate, not for anyone. And it wasn't easy. It took time, a long time. And for me to forgive him, I had to reframe what happened. You know, he didn't deliberately set out to hurt me. He didn't deliberately set out to impact my future. He wasn't thinking past that moment. I then also wondered what may have happened in his life. I know his parents divorced. He didn't get on with his stepdad. You know, who knows what happened there? Maybe he was even abused himself. You know, I'll never know for sure why he did what he did. But what I am sure of is this. He never deliberately set out to hurt me. He was only young himself. He wasn't considering the emotional consequences of his actions. And look, I know it goes against many of our instincts to forgive someone who has hurt us like that. Because when someone does something bad to us, we feel the need to have revenge. We need to level the score. They wronged us and it hurt our pride. And we tend to use our hate and threats and anger in an attempt to reclaim the power. And there's no power there. There's no power in hatred. And people, deliberately or not, will hurt us during our lives. It's going to happen. And the quicker we can learn to let it go, then the better it's going to be for us. Refuse to let it destroy you. Because really, what's the alternative? Do you learn to lead a life fueled on fear and hatred and self-pity? Do you learn to forgive and take your life back? I know it takes time, but realise forgiving is empowering you, not them, you. And I'll tell you this, if it hadn't been for my stepbrother, I wouldn't be doing this now. I wouldn't have been interested in the psychology of learning. These words I'm saying now would have never been spoken, and you would never have heard them. So not only have I come to actually forgive him, I thank him. Now, you may be listening to this thinking nobody's ever negatively impacted my life to this extent. And I hope you're right. But are you absolutely sure? Take a closer look at any of your negative traits. Where have they come from? Where have your beliefs come from? Trace them back. They've all come from somewhere. 
I don't know, you know, maybe you loved your dad, but you wish he told you he loved you more. Maybe your parents divorced and you've never fully appreciated how that has changed your thoughts and what you believe. Maybe you've had a bad relationship and that subconsciously is driving how you think, talk and react within your relationship today. Whether you've been affected by the actions of others or not, whatever you believe to be true or not true, whatever happens in your life, remember this, you always have a choice. You can choose to hate or you can choose to forgive. You can choose to be angry, hurt and upset or you can choose to be lucky and happy and blessed. You can choose to take responsibility or you can choose not to. You can choose to give up your life to someone else or you can choose to take control. They are your thoughts, your mind, your choice. And believe me, you are stronger than you think. You are braver than you think. You are better than you think. You are not normal. You are so special. Trust yourself. Just trust yourself. Stand up and do it. Decide to take responsibility. Decide to forgive. Decide to be the person you deserve to be. Decide to have the life you deserve to live and do it now. Because this week, these days, this now is going to pass anyway. So why not make this now a super now? A super now that just makes you go, wow. Hi, it's Grant J. Marsh, and I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you would like to receive further content and free training materials, please head over to supernowwow.com. If you would like to support the show, then I would be extremely grateful. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes if you haven't already, and leave an honest review of the show. Or, if you can put up with staring at me for each episode, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel Grant J. Marsh. Finally, I'll be absolutely thrilled if you join me on Facebook at Grant J. Marsh Fan. That's Grant J. Marsh Fan, where every day I try to post inspiring content for you. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot. And remember, today's going to pass anyway. So make this now a super now, a super now that just makes you go, wow.